Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Sergei Kiselev, and I'm a technical consulting engineer uh, working for Intel Developers Product Division. Uh, my, main, uh, my main focus is Intel System Studio, and I'm going to talk uh, how Intel System Studio tools can be used uh, for Internet of the Things development. So, uh, on my agenda today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the challenges uh, developing uh, software for IoT and give a brief uh, overview of Intel System Studio. I'm going to focus a little bit more on uh, Intel C and C++ compilers and on the performance optimized libraries that we're offering. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our uh, profilers, uh, Intel Vtune, the profiler and Intel Inspector. And uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, our tools specific for IoT development, such as uh, Intel IoT Developer Kit and Intel System Studio for microcontrollers. And uh, finally, I'm uh, going to show how we use these tools to implement a prototype of uh, an IoT solution. Uh, and uh, I'll be uh, happy to answer your questions. So, all right. As you know, uh, in our lives uh, right now, all the devices are getting connected. And uh, it doesn't really matter what segment you're talking about. Is it a personal IoT de devices or is it a mobile or a transportation, or retail, industrial automation and such. So, the challenge uh, for developers really is uh, what, uh, how, how do we uh, find so, or how do, how do we um, uh, use software development tools that are comprehensive and easy that uh, can quick, uh, help us quickly resolve uh, defects uh, in these complex systems. Um, in uh, many of these applications, power consumption is a uh, key for issues, so we would like to have uh, tools that will offer us uh, some insight uh, to the excess power consumption. And of course, we do care about performance. So uh, these tools and libraries that uh, would allow us to optimize performance uh, is also a requirement here. And so uh, I would like to introduce the Intel System Studio. It is a foundational tool suite of um, uh, software development tools for system and embedded developers. The Intel System Studio supports the complete range of Intel CPUs, uh, anything starting from uh, Intel Core microprocessors to Intel Xeon processors. The suite includes uh, an optimizing C++ compiler. Uh, it, it includes uh, ready-to-use high-performance production quality uh, libraries. It includes uh, uh, performance and power analysis tools, um, memory and threading analysis tools. It includes a couple of debuggers. One of them is application and system debugger uh, and enhanced uh, GDP based debugger. Another tool which we are offering, I'm not going to talk too much today, but uh, to give you a background, we have a system debug and trace, which is useful for people who uh, build their own uh, boards um, and write their own biases and such. Um, so all these tools in Intel System Studio uh, will help you get to a market faster with increasing the reliability and uh, it will boost performance of your uh, solution and improve power efficiency. So Intel System Studio comes in uh, a free uh, editions. We have a composer edition, which is uh, basically geared to our uh, simple developers. Uh, it offers the optimizing compilers, it, it offers the libraries. Um, we have the professional edition, which adds on top of a composer edition the various profilers we have. And finally, the ultimate edition also adds a system uh, debugger. And uh, uh, also, the, well, basically, it's a system debugger and trace. That's, that's what it is. 
So uh, the Intel System Studio can run on Linux or Windows as the host uh, operating system. That's where you will have your tools installed. And when uh, the target operating systems or systems you are, you are doing development for are uh, Linux, Android, Windows, uh, there is limited support for um, Mac OS X as well. Um, and uh, hardware and processors we support, as I mentioned, they range basically from anything starting from Intel Quark, uh, X1000 microprocessor, and all the way to Intel Xeon. Um, we do support a few development platforms. Uh, uh, we have Intel Edison or Intel Dual IoT modules. They also support uh, some of uh, Intel uh, media gateways. All right, uh, so let me talk a little bit uh, about our build part of uh, Intel System Studio, which includes the compiler and the libraries. Well, our C++ compiler, it's uh, basically uh, very much GDB, uh, GCC compatible. So in many cases, it could be used just as a drop-in replacement. The compiler itself is uh, optimized and we keep it updated with every new processor generation and instruction set extension that comes in Intel processors. For example, lately, Intel uh, started to support AVX uh, 520, um, sorry, 512 instruction set uh, for uh, advanced vector uh, extensions. And uh, our Intel C compiler already has support for that. Uh, these processors, um, these instructions are just uh, starting to come to the market. But even if you use a lower end processors uh, such as Atom or Intel Core processors, it still offers um, an impressive um, improve, uh, uh, improvement in performance. So, for example, uh, here is a result of benchmark. And you can see that in 64 uh, bit for this particular benchmark, we get about 20% of uh, performance improvement versus uh, GCC. And that's uh, run on an Intel Atom processor, so not so uh, very advanced processor. In addition to the um, C compiler, the build model or your uh, composer edition also will come with some libraries. So here I would like to mention IPP, uh, Intel Integrated Performance Primitive Library. That is not the only library it comes with. There is a few more, uh, but I find uh, IPP library is especially useful for Internet of the Things type of application. So, Intel Integrated Performance Primitives offers a high quality production ready, low level building blocks for image processing, signal processing, data processing, for example, data compression, decompression, uh, cryptography applications. And these libraries are highly optimized again, for a wide range of Intel architecture processors, and anything from Quark to the Xeon, and even Xeon Phi uh, coprocessors. Uh, I'd like to mention also that these libraries are royalty free. So uh, instead of st developers, instead of uh, spending time and money on development, uh, developing their own optimizations and implementing their own algorithms, uh, can just use these uh, libraries freely in their application, and uh, that will give them the best performance possible for the given Intel platform. Here is just, uh, again, um, uh, an example or a benchmark uh, of our customer, uh, which uh, was using um, a regular Zlib library, and then uh, we switched to the uh, Zlib compression or the decompression offered by IPP. And as you can see, in some cases, we get uh, as much as uh, three times uh, performance improvement. And uh, in some cases, it's a little bit less, but generally it's faster than just open source uh, Zlib. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about our analysis tools, uh, compilers. 
So, uh, Pritos I'm going to talk here is uh, Intel Vision Amplifier, that I think one of the uh, popular tools uh, that we have in uh, Intel System Studio. Um, I'm also going to touch on Energy uh, Profiler and on Intel Inspector. So, uh, basically, Vision Profiler will allow you to uh, analyze performance of your system or application and represent it in a very easy to use graphical way. Um, the analysis, uh, it, it provides very wide, wide variety of uh, analysis types. Uh, we have anything from uh, basic hotspot analysis will give you uh, the places in your program or application which uh, consume the most uh, of the CPU time. Uh, to the drill down to microarchitecture level, where you can see why these uh, problems happen. For example, are you uh, experiencing some of the cache misses, or maybe your uh, application is not using all the uh, cores available on your system, and so on. So, on this uh, screenshot here on the right side, uh, there is an example of a basic hotspot analysis. Uh, on the top, it, will, uh, it shows uh, the functions in your application, uh, and uh, it has some kind of graphic of represent representation how well it uses uh, the CPU. Um, it estimates it using uh, like known uh, cycles per instruction number versus uh, your application uh, numbers, which is probably would vary from uh, architecture to architecture. Uh, on the bottom part of that window, you see the uh, threads that your application has and uh, basically you can uh, see how well you're using uh, all the uh, cores available on your system. So um, another advantage of Intel Vision is that it is uh, it really doesn't require any uh, instrumentation or uh, recompilation of your application. You basically can uh, debug your release application. Um, well, only one note where if you do want to get a, a source code, you'll need to compile it with uh, symbols, but uh, that's kind of obvious. Uh, in, uh, for, for the basic analysis, you also don't need any uh, instrumentation on the target platform. So you, for, for example, in case of Linux, you can just run it all in user space. But uh, for some advanced analysis, you will need to install kernel modules. Uh, which is uh, fairly easy to do also and uh, well documented. So here's uh, some more examples of Vtune. Uh, uh, and uh, it uh, shows uh, very, various uh, data grouping you can have uh, like by the function or by the module or source file. That's um, kind of the question is how, what, what is the more um, useful or more convenient way for a programmer to get um, this information displayed. Um, in this particular case, uh, we selected the uh, function and call stack. So it shows the functions on the left side. And uh, if you click on, uh, double click on the function name, it will open another window showing the source of that function. Or if you click on that uh, plus button, it will show you the call stack, uh, basically how did you arrive uh, to that function. Uh, there are some tuning opportunities uh, colored in pink, so basically that's the places that are worth uh, looking at, uh, the places where your uh, application spent more, most of the time. Um, and again, uh, at the bottom there is uh, a display of uh, your CPU threads. Uh, so this gives uh, a little bit uh, more information about uh, locks and weights analysis. That's another analysis type available in Vtune. And uh, that will allow you to understand uh, if you're having any problems related on uh, threads waiting one on another or uh, threads waiting on IO and uh, similar issues. This is um, uh, more of a thread analysis. And it uh, basically shows you some uh, common issues in uh, uh, multi-threading. So the first uh, case we have uh, coarse grain locks. 
and uh, as, a, as a flow basically result of all of these are low concurrency, so we are not using your uh, CPU cores efficiently. Um, the second case is uh, high log contention. You have too many logs, basically, and you have contentions in these logs. And uh, third is load imbalance, one core, as you can see, or two of them are uh, two threads, the number two and number three are very loaded, while number one and zero are basically idle. This is yet another way to represent the data. So uh, you, you can uh, understand uh, if uh, wh what basically you need to optimize. Is it the color function that you need to optimize, or is it the quality function, which, uh, the one that you call need to optimize? The basic idea is that uh, the question is where you spend more time. If you if you call one function too too many times, probably. Maybe it, maybe it, it, it worth optimizing the color and just uh, getting it in line or something. And uh, um, in some cases, if you could call the same function uh, from multiple places, well, maybe that function uh, just will work optimizing it. All right, so here is another uh, analysis tool, which is uh, Intel Energy Profiler. And uh, Intel Energy Profiler, uh, Instead of like some other tools that would measure your average power usage, uh, Intel Energy Profiler will identify the causes of wake ups. Uh, basically, display why or what causes uh, what functions or what interrupts causes a transition from uh, low power CPU states to high power states. And uh, it will display it in a very nice graphical manner, and you can uh, then go and uh, optimize with things or uh, troubleshoot uh, your application and uh, eliminate these wake, uh, wake up events. Uh, and uh, this tool also supports uh, Linux, Android, and Windows as the target systems. And uh, well, the final uh, one, final uh, analysis tool I will mention here is a memory and a thread debugger called Intel Inspector. It's basically um, a correctness tool. It will uh, find any errors related to the uh, races and deadlocks uh, in your threads, or a memory errors such as uh, uh, buffer uh, overflows and, and similar kind of issues. Uh, now, it, it is a static analysis, so you basically you get uh, to know all these uh, uh, issues without uh, running the application and it finds non-deterministic errors or something that would be really difficult to reproduce. Um, you can just know these um, issues upfront. And it's, it just uh, reduces your uh, support costs, develop, uh, development costs and such. Um, don't, don't really uh, need to spend that much time debugging. Uh, or the, uh, the bugging with issues. Um, all right. So uh, finally, I would like to mention uh, two uh, additional tools which are not a part of Intel System Studio right now, uh, although we are working on bringing them in, into Intel System Studio tools yet. But they work uh, together well. So one additional tool is Intel System Studio for microcontrollers. Uh, Basically, an integrated ID, debugger, uh, compiler, and everything you need to develop an Intel Core microcontrollers. And the other tool is Intel IoT Developer Kit. It, it is a set of uh, ID and uh, libraries. I'm not going to talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. Um, just uh, as an introduction, this Intel uh, IoT Developer Kit allows easy development of uh, various Intel IoT platforms, such as uh, our uh, Joule and Edison modules, Kodalil, uh, prototyping board, or Intel-based IoT gateways. It doesn't have to be that, that you can also develop uh, software for regular uh, Intel-based computers or systems using that. Uh, if you, say, want to connect sensors or actuators to your regular PC, you can use that library still. All right. 
So talking about Intel um, IoT Developer Kit. So Intel uh, IoT Developer Kit solution stack is designed to rapidly move IT solutions from uh, prototype to production with minimal time and expense. It uh, focuses to aid developers in creating innovative high value functionality with tools, templates, libraries, and other resources. The goal is to lower the cost of entry into the IoT market. Every layer in the solution stack, from hardware to the cloud, analyst, analyst, uh, analytic support, flexible options for rapid prototyping with an easy path to product. In fact, we offer a few path to product uh, papers and uh, documentation, so you can go um, uh, search online for that, and uh, you'll see these examples where we basically show how we prototype the system using one of the prototyping boards and uh, Intel IT developer kit when we uh, make a production-like system still using Intel IT developer kit. So the fact that it has a consistent API that supports uh, various sensors makes it really easy to move uh, something from uh, prototyping stage to production. So Intel IoT Developer Kit includes uh, two libraries. One library is uh, Libmara, and that library provides a high um, level API to IO, such as your regular GPIO or um, I squared C spy type of buses, uh, serial bus, and such. The idea behind this library is that uh, these IOs are very much uh, hardware dependent. So it is really uh, the way to program these uh, interfaces is really different from one platform to another. Even if you take uh, two fairly similar Intel boxes or Intel prototyping platform, say uh, Joule and uh, Edison or Joule and Mino board, it will be fairly um, different. So if you would uh, to write your own application and program uh, this uh, hardware directly, you'll need to rewrite it basically for each for each board. Uh, where Libra provides an abstraction, so it doesn't really matter on what platform you are, as long as uh, you have a given type of interface, um, it will work. Really simple to uh, move your application from one board to another. And as an added uh, feature, it also uh, supports uh, connecting IO devices through Arduino 101 uh, board so that you can uh, connect your devices even to a regular PC, basically full USB interface. Use it as an uh, use that Arduino 101 board as an uh, IO expansion. It also supports some other IO expansion uh, boards, uh, for example, some FTDI. Uh, chip based uh, words. Yeah, I will, uh, I will post, post the slides after. Next uh, layer is the UPM library. So UPM uh, is based on top of uh, Limbra, Libra. It is again open source. By the way, Libra is open source library. And just to mention, not only it supports not only Intel platforms, uh, there are some other platforms that uh, support it. And uh, UPM builds on top of that. It provides even higher level interface. So it's basically a library uh, for sensors, actuator support. Um, we support about, well, right now it's more than uh, almost 300 sensors, I think. And uh, we support some sensors that are you know, pretty cheap and easy to get uh, maker style sensors. Uh, and uh, we have uh, added supports for industrial grade sensors as well. So this is gives you an opportunity to start developing uh, and prototyping. This is uh, easily available cheap sensors without spending tons of money on industrial grade sensors. And once you figured uh, what do you need, how your uh, product will look like, then you can uh, go and uh, acquire these uh, industrial grade sensors and use them as well. The our interesting uh, thing about uh, UPM library, MRA library actually, is that it basically provides support for multiple programming languages. So we have support for uh, natively based on uh, C and C++. 
uh, we have both varieties, but then they also provide uh, wrappers for uh, Python, JavaScript, Java, uh, and uh, so that gives you an opportunity to prototype, especially using uh, these uh, programming languages. Hopefully, will, that will allow faster prototyping. All right, so uh, now I will move to the Intel System Studio for microcontrollers. And uh, the idea, initial idea was uh, to make a tool suit similar to Intel System Studio, but targeting microcontrollers specifically. As I mentioned before, we're working on integrating it into the bigger Intel System Studio right now. But it provides kind of similar uh, components. So we have a compiler and we have libraries. Uh, it is interesting that we also have a um, smaller version of our uh, integrated performance primitives libraries uh, optimized specifically for uh, microcontrollers. We have some uh, optimized floating point libraries for microcontrollers. And we also have our UPM and MRA libraries ported, ported to our microcontrollers, uh, which um, basically makes it easier to develop um, or port your applications between microcontrollers and uh, regular MPU, um, like regular processor-based systems. So all this is integrated in an Eclipse ID. Um, we provide really good uh, and uh, easy to use way to start programming using uh, um, like tens of different samples, basically for whatever uh, application you would like to use or whatever interface, hardware interface you would like to use or uh, operating system feature you would like to use, whereas a sample. And uh, you can start from using one of these samples. Uh, we provide the power anal analysis tool. So that does require a little bit of instrumentation, but it uh, also gives you some idea of uh, how much time your uh, microcontroller is uh, uh, sleeping or not sleeping, and uh, where exactly. So you can use this information to uh, optimize the power of your application. And uh, finally, we use we have uh, a debugger. It is an open OCD JTAG based debugger for um, our prototyping boards or development keyboards. Um, we have included uh, the JTAG, uh, USB to JTAG bridge on the board, so that is really easy to start with. You don't really need to purchase any additional hardware to do that. Uh, for some other boards, such as uh, Arduino 101, uh, you do need to purchase an uh, USB to JTAG adapter, but these are fairly cheap uh, in the order of $20, $30, if I'm not mistaken, adapters. Um, as far as uh, underlying uh, software infrastructure goes, uh, we support uh, Zephyr real-time operating system, or we support um, what we call bare metal operation using uh, Intel Quark uh, software interface library, which uh, still provides you some hardware abstraction layer. Uh, so say if you develop into on, on one Intel uh, Quark microcontroller, say the 2000, you can uh, fairly simple uh, port your application to another Intel microcontroller. So it's the same library, so you don't really need to uh, you know, program that microcontroller on the register level. Uh, any of uh, iOS register level, you basically use an abstraction library, and it's fairly efficient. So, really, no need to uh, program anything on the uh, hardware level, uh, level on the registers. All right. So here's uh, some of uh, an overview of uh, the features offered in uh, Intel System Studio for microcontroller. On the right side, we have an, a little bit older T1000 uh, microcontroller. Uh, some somewhere. Um, just kind of to make it clear, the D1000 uh, implement a little bit different instruction set from regular X86 uh, instruction set that where all other microcontrollers, um, D2000, C1000, they have an uh, um, X86 compatible instruction set. Um, so I mentioned most of these uh, components already. Um, I think tiny quick library I didn't mention, but it's a uh, really small. Uh, Library for encryption, and uh, all right. So yeah, host for host operating systems will support again Windows and Linux. All right. So now I'm going uh, to go through an example of a 
using ecosystem to do the solution. This is something that we've done here for demo purposes, uh, and I think it could be somewhat uh, useful to uh, see where, what tools can be used where and why. Uh, so our uh, prototype system is a smart uh, home monitoring uh, and here are some components we decided uh, that we will need uh, to use um, we will have uh, an Intel Atom based IoT gateway uh, we will have additional sensor nodes uh, implement, implemented using Intel Quark AC uh, microcontroller uh, C1000 uh, it would use Intel Bluetooth uh, low energy for communication back to the Intel Atom gateway. Uh, we will connect a camera and uh, use some face detection, for example, to determine who the, who the user is, and then uh, adjust some settings accordingly. Um, and uh, when the gateway itself is going to have uh, some devices, uh, actuators attached, uh, directly to it, uh, so, uh, and for that we will be using um, Ryan UPM to program these devices. Uh, so here is the hardware we use uh, with the IoT gateway. Um, for this particular example, we used Intel uh, system based on the newer Apollo Lake type of uh, Atom processor. Uh, some additional hardware, so, uh, as I mentioned before, we can use, uh, we use in this example, Arduino 101 board for IO expansion, since this uh, NUC system doesn't really come with any IOs other than USB ports. Uh, this solution allows you to add, uh, connect some devices basically to this system. And then we use uh, Seed Studio Growth Starter Kit. Um, it is just a small kit with uh, uh, some sensors and the base port that, uh, and cables that. Uh, uh, allow connect and connection with uh, sensor to Arduino on one board. Uh, for the software development uh, or for the for the OS, target used uh, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, on the uh, production, uh, in the deployment uh, situation, um, more likely people will gonna use uh, Yocto based uh, system or maybe in the river Linux, which is also Yocto based as far as I know. Um, but again, so for, for development purposes, Ubuntu is easier to use since um, you can uh, install development tools uh, direct on the system. Um, there is some software we installed initially on that uh, Ubuntu system. We installed this Brian UPM libraries. Um, we do provide RPMs for these, or uh, if you like, you know, it, that's what we did. We downloaded that from. A GitHub repository, and I'll have links uh, later on. And uh, we basically uh, installed all these um, libraries on the system. Uh, we also installed uh, uh, a Python package to uh, and, and Bluetooth to support and, and Python package to support uh, uh, Bluetooth. And then uh, some uh, cloud connectors and uh, SQLite 3, which is uh, less relevant for this presentation. But obviously, if you build an IoT device, you want uh, to be able to. Uh, Talk back to the internet. And, uh, all right. So, um, well, here is this uh, gives you a little bit of idea how you can prototype using uh, UPM, and it's just a, a, a small uh, part of the code which we run on that um, IMC gateway. And uh, for prototyping purposes, uh, we used Python. A um, little bit easier to to work with and change on C plus plus. Uh, the API, by the way, it's not very different from Python to C++, so you can prototype using Python and then uh, move to C++, C++ relatively easy. Um, it shows uh, basically how you create uh, some objects for uh, your sensor and a couple of relays. And then uh, you have, for, for each object, you have methods to work with that. For sensor, it will be uh, some get temperature, for example, uh, this relays are on and off methods. Um, really simple. Uh, I mean, if you to see what what it actually takes to um, turn or, or on and off a, a GPI on a Linux system, it's actually like about ten different uh, writes to the C systems. So that really simplifies the 
process. Uh, also, um, kind of expectedly, we faced a problem with our application. We were using, uh, we installed the stock uh, OpenCV, which just comes with Ubuntu. And uh, uh, we used the uh, standard resolution setting on the, uh, our camera. Uh, with the standard, I think it's going to the VGA resolution. And we've got a pretty poor uh, performance. So it was about 2.6 uh, uh, frames per second. Now keep in mind that it's just a uh, uh, basic recognition. So we don't really need to have like uh, 30 or 60 uh, frames per second. Uh, but, you know, Two frames per second still very slow. Basically, required the person to, you know, to stay still for a while so that it like half a second so it can capture the face and uh, try to recognize it. Um, so we installed Intel systems uh, studio on our target system on our um, host system, and we deployed the uh, data collector on our target system. And we ran some uh, hotspot analysis on that, and we basically. Uh, Noticed that the cascade classifier in our uh, OpenCV um, was taken a lot of time, most of the time, from um, all the uh, face recognition application. So it wasn't related to the performance of our webcam or kernel bottleneck or anywhere else in the park. We basically drilled down to a uh, concrete function in the uh, library, which was uh, causing the slowdown. Uh, so um, fortunately, uh, OpenCV provides very good integration with uh, Intel performance primitives. In fact, if you download I think, uh, version 3.0 app, it already comes with uh, Intel performance primitives libraries uh, with some subset of that, actually. In our case, we, in we installed uh, the, the whole uh, library and uh, we recompiled uh, OpenCV using the uh, Intel C compiler and integrated performance primitive library. And as you can see in this example, we've got, uh, basically, we went from 2.6 frames per second to almost 6.8, so more than uh, two times speed up, just, just by using the compiler and the library. Uh, well, so a little bit on a node uh, setup for, for this uh, project. Again, so we decided to use uh, this evaluation key, which is nice because it comes with all the uh, JTAG uh, adapter and higher basically all the hardware needed uh, to do a development. Uh, we did uh, connect this powerful, uh, pretty popular uh, Bosch uh, environmental uh, sensor. Uh, and uh, so, so as far as uh, uh, software development goes, so we used the Intel System Studio for microcontrollers and uh, we used Zephyr real-time operating system. The reason being is that it already comes with examples for programming uh, Bluetooth. Um, so it was uh, fairly easy to get uh, a sample application and just add the functionality we needed. Uh, as far as, as uh, sensor support goes, so Zephyr uh, does provide support for that particular sensor. So that's the UPM uh, driver library. And uh, I'm going to show a little bit uh, how does that work or how what's difference in API if you use one versus another one. Um, so, well, on the right, you basically, I just have a screenshot of uh, your new project wizard, and it just shows that you can use the um, environmental sensing profile uh, example uh, to get started with. And it, uh, it basically supplies some fake data, uh, but it does re realize the uh, standard uh, Bluetooth uh, GAD service for uh, environmental uh, sensing. So on the left side, there is a um, sample code for, for Zephyr. Uh, so basically, you if you, if you go like uh, half the way down, more or less, um, you get a device binding for, for that uh, sensor. Uh, you basically supply a sensor name. When you have a function to fetch uh, a data from the sensor, uh, sensor sample data, and when you have another function to access the data, and uh, in this case, the sensor has Three channels, uh, three different sensors basically integrated in one. So, where is the for loop which iterates from uh, channels and just fetches the data? Now, the data is stored in um, that uh, sensor value structure, uh, which is two uh, 32 bit integers. And uh, the actual format of data would depend from 
uh, one data type to another. So temperature, for example, is stored in uh, uh, degrees Celsius and then uh, hundreds of degrees Celsius in the hour value. Um, and when your application would need to parse that data, convert it to a format usable uh, for transmission and analysis and such. Uh, where if you look at the UPM driver, it, it is in some in some aspects similar. In this case, we do call uh, our driver initialization function, and uh, we provide the uh, the address. So it, it makes it somewhat a little bit more more flexible. In case of uh, Zephyr compilation, you need to define these um, variables in Zephyr configuration, and it also allows you to to attach multiple sensors like that. You can specify different uh, I squared C bus number or different uh, uh, I score C address. So in this, in case of this sensor, it, it uh, can be set up to uh, two different addresses. So you can have two sensors connected like that, which is not possible with a regular server driver. And then you have a similar kind of idea. You have this update function, which uh, fetches the data from the sensor and stores it in, 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 in the internal uh, structure. And then uh, you have uh, a few functions to access that data. In this case, the data returned as a float number. So you get just a just a result in degrees Celsius or in, uh, Pascal's or for the pressure or uh, percents in case of uh, relative humidity. Uh, so that would be it for my uh, short presentation here. Uh, and uh, um, okay, so I see I have a, a couple of questions. I can answer them. And if you have more questions, please feel free. Uh, to type, type them in a um, uh, chat window. Uh, I have one question which was related. Uh, so sensor kit such as growth is primary uh, for primarily for uh, development and prototyping. Based on the, how does one lead into pre-production or production hardware? So as I mentioned, uh, UPM library supports uh, some of the uh, uh, industrial sensors. And uh, Basically, these sensors would have very similar API. So what you need to do in this case is uh, you do your hardware, obviously. You need to reconnect these sensors. In some cases, uh, you know, growth kit uh, comes with some really cheap sensors. For example, your temperature sensor would be an analog uh, kind of uh, thermoresistor type of sensor where in your uh, production application it might be, say, I squared C sensor um, or serial bus based sensor. Uh, then in this case, uh, the hardware will be different, but uh, as far as your software goes, it, it will be still very similar. You might need to instantiate a different, use a different bus in, in UPM to get a different driver, but then the access functions are similar. So um, that gives you really simple path. And as I mentioned, we have a few path to product uh, kind of uh, projects and uh, you can I think find them on uh, software.intel.com um, and uh, you know, check it for yourself. Um, so there is a question about TI sensor tag. I'm not quite sure what uh, what about that. Uh, uh, is it a sensor tag which we can support or not? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't I didn't hear about that. All right then so uh, on the last slide, I have a few resources, and uh, as I promised, I will uh, publish this, this slide so you can and go and uh, you know, have actual document with clickable links. Uh, where it says this URL to Intel System Studio. Intel System Studio is a paid product, but you can obtain uh, a 30-day uh, evaluation for free, uh, which basically a complete product. Uh, and then you can decide if you want to buy it or uh, and what version you want to buy. So Intel uh, System Studio for microcontrollers is a free product. Uh, the T2000 uh, development kit is fairly cheap. I think it's about uh, $15. So you're welcome to download the tool and to try it. There is a reference to Zephyr uh, real-time operating system. That's the uh, RTOS which we support in uh, Intel System Studio for microcontrollers. And that's the one we were using for that uh, sample project. Um, there is also a few links uh, related to the uh, Intel IT developer kit. 
so whereas uh, this Intel System Studio IT edition uh, ID integrated uh, with uh, uh, some of uh, the IoT DevKit uh, components, Ryan UPM included, and it supports uh, some of our uh, developer platforms. We have mentioned uh, Joo, Galileo, Edison, and such. And then there are two links to Ryan UPM libraries, uh, again, open source libraries to support your um, sensors, on your main uh, developer boards. All right, well, uh, thank you very much for attending uh, this uh, talk. And, uh, all the best with your uh, Internet of the Things adventure. Thank you.